This is Chet Hanks, the son of Tom Hanks. We're gonna do a group forgiveness on this and we're gonna feel better. Not only for Chet Hanks, but for all of these like idiot rich kids, because there's so many of them and they make people so mad. So uh, yeah, this is Chet Hanks, Tom Hanks' son. Let's just, let's check it out. I was hooking up with this chick. One day she was <laughs> on the phone with her family in Jamaica and she was really in the middle of a heated conversation. Tell that pussy cloud girl me know what. I really had no idea what the fuck she was saying. And her friend said, feel me a picnic in the car with me so I can't chat. I'm like, wow, wow. So wait, break that down. So she, and so then I just started, she started breaking down a lot of shit. I'm like, how do you say this? John no star. How do you say that? Oh, like seven. Oh, oh, oh. She was just telling me how to say different shit. So I got for like a, a week, like I was really on a Jamaican tip. And uh, that just happened to be the week of the Golden Globes. Big up the whole island, massive. It's your boy Chetana coming straight from the Golden Globes, you know what I'm Big up, tune in. I turned my phone on and the video had gone totally viral. Yeah, that's Chet, you guys. I am shook. <laughs> and frankly, hella confused. We got the youth them way out of Kingston. It's just, like why? That's a, I just don't get why. Uh, appropriation. I had Jamaicans blowing up my Instagram. But respect, General. We are gonna come to the island. You know what I mean? The Jama Jamaican people showed me the most love, hands down. But then you got all these social justice warriors in America saying that I'm a fucking villain. How do you feel about the <laughs> idea of cultural appropriation overall? Uh, I, don't, I don't fucking know, dude. If I'm interested in fucking uh, uh, bullfighting, I can fly to Spain and go watch a bullfight. And if I want to go talk to a matador and say, hey, bro, can you teach me how to fucking fight the bulls? And he's like, hell yeah, bro. Here, put this on. He's stoked that I'm stoked, right? Some asshole out there is going gonna, is gonna to say I'm fucked up because I'm... Here's the thing. So far, so far, I'm like with it. That's the, yeah, that's same, the issue. Same. That's the issue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, he's saying it. And I'm like, okay, you're an idiot. You made a mistake. Stupid. But so far I'm with it. But watch where, watch where he brings too much judgment. Then I'm like, idiot, you lost me. Culturally appropriating the matador culture. But, but, but I'm not even like mad though, because all these haters, they're on the way out, dude. There's more people that fuck with what the fuck I'm saying than there's people that are angry about what the fuck y'all talking about. And that's a motherfucking fact. Big up the whole island, damn man. Just don't do that. Don't even do that. <laughs> that's that's Just... me, right? That's too much. You did it. <coughs> he does it, and he's like, what? Why is everyone mad? Just need to practice before you go on, like, a, a, a stage like that. Big, it, big up to you, them? No, don't do that, dude. How did, how did it <laughs> run? I don't understand. Big up, say it with passion, bro. Big up to you, them. Big up to you, them. <laughs> I think we almost sounded the no, same. I think I did it a little better. Can, Can you coach, coach him through this? This is starting to stress me out. Breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> You're watching Channel 5. That is ridiculous though, right? Oh yeah, that's so funny. That's so, <laughs> I know, why does he tell him not to do it? I know so many brown guys that just talk like that, like all the time. And they're not from, they just needed it. Like they were feeling lonely, they were feeling sad in high school and they needed it. They needed a crutch. And they just, <laughs> you know what I mean? They just needed some help. They didn't think they could do it on their own. They needed to lean on someone. And you know, that is like a loving kindness. Honestly, if he didn't just diss him then after, I I would kind of be like, what's the issue? Okay. But then you just turn around and rip this guy. That's rude. And it was really kind of like a double-edged sword. P people assume, and I just live this life, like super privileged life, like Richie Rich, you know what I mean? And that just wasn't the case. And it, it was actually the opposite. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they, never, they never fucking gave me an allowance. I don't know if I'm the brokest rich kid or the richest broke kid. I, I love my, my, my mom and dad. <laughs> He's a so lot, funny with the reaction. It was kind of inevitable that, that I rebelled because they had me like on a really short leash. They're like really like goody goody square, you know, Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, Scouts Honor type people. You know what I mean? And that was never my vibe. For example, like when I got caught smoking weed, right? My mom was out in absolute hysterics. Oh, God! You know what I mean? Like it was, it was bad. I got sent away to the fucking um, wilderness program when I was 17. 
It was four in the Really? This mom is like freaking out. She's like a Hollywood mom. Oh my yeah. God. He looks so gangsta. Wangsta. He looks so wangsta. He's so wangsta. <laughs> wangsta. Yeah, he is like, it's weird. It's like, um, he just went, yeah, he just went the hood direction, I guess. That you know, At the young age, he went, he just wanted to be like that. It's, I feel bad because like so many brown guys do it. Just so many, and they kind of get a pass. Like I thought last year, one person wrote like an article about Superwoman, saying like, "Hey, I think you're appropriating black culture." Like you know what I mean? Like Superwoman, um, the, from Toronto. I, I think it's like one article. I feel like you get away with it if you're brown. Like nobody cares. But him doing it, plus he's a rich kid, plus everyone knows you're not even from there. Because if you're brown, you could be West Indian. So you never know. This guy, everyone knows. It's his dad's rich, so you're just putting on an accent. I guess so. I don't know. How do you feel? Is it, is it wrong? Even okay. If you let the other guy do it, then would you care? I think it's cute that he's dressing up like that as a kid. Uh <laughs> true, true. Yeah, it is. It's adorable. It is like as a kid a dressing adult, up like a mafia. I think he has a lot of growing up to do. Yeah. It's. I mean, you know, it's. It's like in America, there's always been this tradition, like kids will dress, like boys will dress up like aren't soldiers, or they'll dress up as like a cowboy or something. And they are like, mer like they are killers. Like a cowboy is like a criminal, and they'll be like, "I'm the cowboy" or whatever, and they they have a gun, toy gun. But it, I, it's, it's weird that his parents were like, "Oh, you're not allowed to smoke weed." It's like, eh, it's I just feel like he blames his parents Morning, for everything. Like, like grow, grow up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. I mean, it is a lot to not just be like your parents for everything. Yeah. I guess we look at these guys and we like, they're, they're just like, there's like, you know how hard it is to be rich? You know how hard it is for me? You know the crazy thing? He's not wrong. Like, all the ultra rich kids I know, like, I know like a bunch of ultra rich kids. They're miserable. They're miserable and they just have mental health issues. Like, they're having a hard time in life. They're like their ruining parents their parents' weren't there lives. For them. I guess I, it, that's what it is, right? So, this is. And this is really the cycle of God. This is how rich people's money, it, we always think like, oh, the rich will be rich forever and we're gonna be screwed, whatever. Only some rich kids are tight. Like the Walmart kids are tight. They'll keep it forever. Maybe another generation, but then they'll have screwed up kids. But most rich people, it's like Succession. I don't know, are you watching Succession at all? No. So good, it's on HBO. The whole show is basically this guy who owns like the Fox News. Like he's a billionaire, owns Fox News basically. Like it's like that character in a TV show. Mm -hmm. He owns the biggest network in America. And then he has like four kids and he's just making them all fight for his money. He's like old, he's rich, and he's like, who wants it the most? And who's gonna be on top of their shit? And he makes them fight and he makes them hate each other. That's so and messed up. It's so messed up. At one point, I mean, it's so messed up that they just can't get in a room and fucking figure this out, you idiots. You are like, you're running like a masses, you know, they're little like oligarchs. You have like a little kingdom that you're inheriting. Get together and figure it out and do it properly. Like, don't, you know, like, don't be, like, this is so wasteful and they're gonna waste it all. It seems like they'll just ruin it because there's not gonna be enough money for all four of them. They're just idiots. They're all so dumb and silly. But the worst thing is though, at one point in the, so I'm in the, I'm in the last season and this is not a spoiler or anything, but at one point they're at something where there's like a lot of publicity, a lot of cameras. And then the dad and the daughter are driving somewhere in the limo. And the dad's like, why didn't you hug me? And then the daughter's like, cause we don't hug. <laughs> You've never hugged me. Like basically they've never hugged cause they're rich and they're messed up. And the dad's like, yeah, but the cameras were there. You should have hugged me. <laughs> it's so it's such a silly show it really makes rich people just look like you idiots just be poor then if you're gonna be this sad stop making so much goddamn money you're being miserable you're gonna get sad and messed up <laughs> and mess up your kids just stop making money it's like it's like we act like we're taxing them for our good you we gotta tax these like billionaires we gotta tax them so they don't go crazy because that's where Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, like they're right there on that cuckoo edge. They're killing it, but killing it, it just turns so quick. And then they don't know. So you almost have to tax them for them, for be like, idiot. You're gonna do things stupid with it. But anyway, let's continue this chat. Thanks. Two huge dudes in my room. Bodybuilder looking like bouncer types, bald heads. They're like, you're coming with us. We can do this the easy way or the hard oh, way. Oh no. And they just 
you know, put me in the back of a, of a car and drove me out to the middle of nowhere. This, this was in my junior year of high school and I never returned. So on my podcast I do on Mondays, we had a guy on who went to these schools, who went to a school like this. And even the Paris Hilton documentary, she gets sent off to a school like that. Oh my God, see this? This is a true loving kindness lesson and a forgiveness lesson. This is why he must be forgiven. <laughs> I mean, we should try. This, his parents sent him to those those abusive schools. They're like these abusive boarding schools. Paris Hilton went to one too. And uh, the guy that was on our show, he said he went to one that wasn't as bad as, it wasn't technically as abusive, but it sounds like what Chet Hanks is talking about is these goddamn rich kids. They don't know what to do with their stupid kids and their kids are getting messed up because they already haven't spent enough time with them. So then you could just call these schools That'll basically be like, hey, we'll just lock them up. We'll just take your kid, we'll lock them up, and we'll just set them straight. Like, that's how they sell themselves as like, well, we're, we're, we'll set your kids straight. But really, it's like you're just abusing these rich kids, and then they're coming out messed up. Yeah, that's what kind of, that, that was the Paris Hilton documentary was about that. And it sounds like they might have done that to, to, the, to the kid here. You ever feel like you wish you had different parents? No, never, never. Sometimes I just wish that I could have, like, been more anonymous. Do you think you would have succeeded to the same degree on social media if you were a blank slate? Probably not. That's why I'm saying it has, it has pros and yeah. cons, it has advantages and disadvantages. You know what I mean? P people assume that because like my dad is super famous that like everybody would like want to be my friend and be like kissing my ass. And that just wasn't the case. I if I walk into a room and someone's like, oh, you know who that is? That's that's Tom Hanks' son. The, the logical reaction is for someone to assume that like I must be like a real cocky, arrogant, spoiled brat, like piece of shit. Like people were inclined to hate my guts. I just internalized it and it just developed me to kind of like have a really negative chip on my shoulder and uh, be very kind of like defensive, just on edge around like meeting new people. That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad because like, it's true though. He's not wrong what he's saying. He. Because the fact that he's doing this interview, it's like, idiot, do you have no social awareness? This guy's like super viral famous, this interviewer. So you should have the goddamn common sense to be like, oh, this guy's doing a video where he's going to basically make me look stupid. That's what these videos are. This, this host, he ha has a show on Vice called All Gas, No Breaks. Super viral. So Chet Hanks, he is like out of touch, man. That's so sad. He's just like... He's just like, yeah, nobody wants to really be my friend. And like, it, like basically what he's describing is he's describing like someone who's like, I'm just out of touch with normal society and I don't get it. So nobody wants to be my friend. And like the fact that he's doing this show, I think is proof of that. Like he doesn't get it. You're just like, this guy brings people on to make fun of them. The other clip the guy did that just came out was uh, all these pickup artists. And there we got, we'll, we can review that next week. Fuck them, Ross. <laughs> I don't know what Robert be. Boss man Biden. So thinking back to your earliest <laughs> memories in life, what is the earliest instance you can remember? Why did he say boss man Biden? Is he a Trump supporter? Come on, dude. You're not helping. Bad gal, white dandada. Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. Bad gal, white dandada. Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. It's like he found his voice, but <laughs> it's not his voice. He found a voice, kind of by the third one, that... Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Rude boy, it's a white boy summer. Bad gal, white What is white? That's not a bad hook. That's okay. Dandara, it's a white like it. The flow's there. I feel like on the second track. Boy summer. White boy summer is me. White boy summer is fun, inclusive. I'm not talking about like Trump, uh, you know, NASCAR type white. I'm talking about you know, you know me. Um, John B, Jack Harlow. White boy summer is love. <laughs> no, it's about no. the white boys that love black queens. It's the white boys that are tuned into the black girl magic. That's really what white boy summer is all about. Oh Just shining God. a light on um. Ew, uh, don't hold her face. Creepy. Don't what's the white? Don't hold the face. <laughs> forgiveness, <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Chet Hanks, you are a fool. You know not what you do, foolish. You know not what you do. Um, yeah, I guess so. Forgive. I mean, look, she got paid. She looks tough. She looks like she handled. Her, she could handle herself, and she got paid. She took some Tom Hanks money, but yeah, it just seemed. Or well, actually, hopefully it was his girlfriend because he did kiss her on the lips. So, yeah. I doubt it. 
weird. That's a judgment, though, emotion. right? No, no, forgiveness. Forgiveness, for good. yeah, yeah. It's... As long as I can remember. Yeah, I might make squirt, hurt. Yeah, let me see a nigga twerk. White boy summer, black queen summer, boom. Black girl magic is a very real thing. Uh, what is it? Magic. Can you describe it with your body language? <laughs> he doesn't so know. How do words work when you speak? Uh, like he just looks like he's in such. I don't know, place. dude. I don't really know. Okay. I just know a little bit. Uh, yeah, that looked like a real Ananda. <laughs> like he did the meditation. You know what I mean? He did the loving kindness right there. I mean, the thing is, it's it's like it seems genuine. It seems yeah. like he's dated. Like so he's fallen. He's fallen in love. Even. So maybe that girl was his. Uh... Yeah, okay. yeah. Like he's out of touch. Mm. Nobody wants to be friends with him. And then at this pivotal point, he had what was it? I heard a lyric in a song where they he calls the love a, a charity. It's like when someone just out of your league falls in love with you, you're like, "Well, God is great. <laughs> what a what a gift. I just got a gift." So it sounds like maybe in all his loneliness while he's feeling alone, like nobody wants to be my friend, whatever. Then a black girl falls in love. And then, you know, at that young age, maybe he just said, you know what? I'm done. I don't care about anything. I just want to be part of this culture. I want to be part of this community. <laughs> boop, boop. Big up the whole island massive. John no star. Big up the youth them. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Make the king go up, up like seven, up, 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 boop, boop, boop. What'd you think about the picture of Adele with the Jamaica bra? Adele, Adele, Adele. You know, I say me a prayer from long time, but after <laughs> I see a picture of Adele, mm, it's sweet, me. That was tight. <laughs> I'm literally making a conscious effort now. His acting is so good, though. He really acts it out good. I don't Meaning feel like commitment. it's even acting. I feel like he literally is possessed. Like he's, he's that into it. He's, he loves them. At, at a time when he was at rock bottom in his life, his parents made a sent him maybe to an abusive high school, which is pretty common for rich, 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 rich people. He's out of touch. Nobody wants to be his friend. And then Black Girl Summer. And that changed his life. And now he's going to sing about it. I mean, I don't know. I think our... our Listen, our forgiveness is definitely very powerful right now. I'll say that. <laughs> to not think or, or give a fuck at all mm -hmm. about what these people are, are possibly saying or talking about. And then that kind of created a whole different beast. It's like people like, I'll be getting a like this last week, I'm like getting a haircut. And my barber's like, dude, so, uh, so you're Tom Hanks' son, huh? You really Tom Hanks' son? Tell your dad to come in here. And it's like, yeah, dude, for sure. You actually think I'm gonna tell my dad that? Like that's what that's the kind of shit me and my dad talk about but but people are so oblivious dude they don't even stop to think about how many billions of fuck millions of times have people told me that you know what my favorite movie of your dad's is and i'm like what but you know like forrest gump oh shit that's that's tom hanks son right there yeah look at him that's him he tied it up oh, no. get his workout on forrest gump it's a classic <laughs> on my lives <laughs> Right here. <laughs> How do you feel about the fact that you just met Tom Hanks' son? Hey, it's cool as fuck. Has he seen your uh, music video? Yeah. They were. I showed my mom and my dad. They were like, "This could be a this. This is like a Cardi B." Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are your aspirations <laughs> for your music career? Pop off. I'm trying to be doing shows all fucking summer, dude. Have you uh, written any bars recently that you're hyped about? You could spit for us. I could just spit some freestyle bars. For sure, that'd be good. Okay, we're chilling on my balcony. I'm doing an interview with you, Andrew. You know what I'm saying? You're that dude. You got a biker hat on. What's that about? Is it for the clout? It say Route 66. I pick up sticks. I might pick up your bitch in a fly ass whip. You know what I mean? I might go do some burpees right outside yeah, my shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm trying to get a pack out of six, like mm -hmm. a six pack. I might drink a six pack of Stella mm -hmm. with a bitch named Bella. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm a good fella. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is off the dumb, it's off the cuff. I just spit the truth, no bluff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause it's a must to keep it real. If you're really in the field, like holy field, you already know the deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's white boy summer, I show the real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. It's not, it's not on you, it's in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been a fool, mm -hmm. but I've been that dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've been that dude and I'm just trying to keep it cool. Laid back, you know what I'm saying? Laid back like Pat Sajak. I spun the wheel of fortune. You know what I'm saying? I got a bitch, she's gorgeous. I'm trying to make it to the Forbes list. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm just chilling on my porch, bitch. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I don't gotta write it. I just recite it, and every time I recite it, I ignite it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I ignite it. Mm-hmm. Lit, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm really with the shits. And we don't give two shits. We don't give two shits. And we about to hit up your bitch. We about to pull up with your bitch. With your bitch. Uh-huh. And two sticks. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a badminton <laughs> club finish. Empty out the clip. Woo! <laughs> White boy summer on a broke bitch. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I honestly oh, find them so entertaining though. It's I'm not Crazy. even like Crazy. laughing it's like fun. I'm laughing because it's funny. Honestly, I was kind of impressed with that with those bars at the end. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> but more as a comedian, maybe. Because as a comedian, I was yeah. like, this is actually pretty funny. Yeah, that's but how I a... felt too. I'm not like laughing in, in mean jest. I just like Yeah, yeah. Like as a I like would a rapper hear that? I mean, I think a rapper would hear that and maybe say. I, okay, I'm not saying that he's Cardi B, but I can see your parents. <laughs> like, anyone's parents. Like, I remember my friend was saying, like, his mom would watch movies, would watch a movie, and then call him and say, I'm watching this movie with Brad Pitt. You could do, you could be in this. You could be in this. Even my mom, one time, she was in South America with my parents, and there's this picture of a mo- like two models making out. And it's like the guy has no shirt on and he's jacked and they're like two models making out. And my mom was like, hey, just like Amish <laughs> to my sisters. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I guess he looks like Amish. But also it's just like, she's just, you know. So his parents are gonna say he's Cardi B is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? He's no Cardi B, but when you love your kids or you love your children, you say, oh yeah, hey, hey. and you're old too, so they don't get it. Like even my cousin's a rapper, and the parents are all like, "Hey, I he, I saw a rapper on TV. I said my Vegas can do it." Like they just, they don't get, they don't know. Like you know what I mean? They're like, "You could do this. What the hell's going on here? How come they're not giving our boys a chance? Huh?" Like that's how they think, and that's cute. At least the dad's, yeah, dad loves them. But that was a great non-judgment.